I think it's a weird thing to try to label the Chippewa Valley music scene as a sound, as one sound, because like you're almost alienating and I think that a lot of times we've kind of alienated a lot of bands here. Like there's blues bands that play all the time throughout Eau Claire and like I don't think we always converse about that as the Eau Claire scene. And like, or you look at like Lake Halley and Chippewa and all of those areas, like even O'Leary's cover bands play like weekly there. And so I know that we're getting more into what's the indie sound in the Chippewa Valley here and that's a... That's a really interesting thing, and I think it's been kind of my life journey in Eau Claire. Like, I, I moved here because I knew John and Jason Sunday, and like, that's about it for what brought me to Eau Claire and free books at the university. And so then, because they were in Daredevil, I got kind of immersed right away in the scene. And, I, and so I've gotten to know a lot of musicians here and build those relationships. And I think those relationships are probably what what influences the indie scene in the Chippewa Valley, if we're speaking specifically of that, you have just, like, massive collaborations. Like, and you have, like, jazz musicians working with rock artists, or and you have, like, your Dave Powers who play, like, with everything, and, like, I think that influence builds into the Eau Claire sound, or the Eau Claire indie sound. Um, one of the things that I'm really interested in is it seems like about four, or well, maybe five, six years ago, we had kind of like these four anchor bands like Daredevil, Larks, Meridine, Gentle Guest, that were playing a lot of things and like, they didn't have the same sound, but it was that same sort of rock exuberance that they were all doing right then. And I've noticed like, as they've progressed and moved on and become more expansive with their own sound, the new Eau Claire sound that's cropping up has its own thing. Like, I mean, you have like, you have like a Sly Slow Love doing really cool electronica, but then you have um, Softly Deer doing their own brand of rock and like ha with a real joy. And so, but I mean, their their sounds as such couldn't be like more different, but they do have that like just joy, I think, which is one of the things that builds this place. Um, and. It might sound cliche, but I think that there's a certain innocence in the Chippewa Valley sound. I think a lot of people make really, really straightforward music, even if they're being artistic with it. It still is this, this communication. I think that's about people being in a place where they love and frankly feel comfortable. I mean, not that these artists are working great jobs here or have good careers, but it's so comfortable to live here that I think that 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 comfort is built into like the loving sound of the music it's it's not the fight like even you look at our punk band arms aloft like well our punk band sorry punk bands like there's so many great punk bands that have been here and will be here and i mean like i said there's great metal like it's an expansive scene um but you you look at like arms aloft and their music isn't so much damn the man, it's just like, let's have fun and keep partying. And not in the Andrew WK way, but almost in that same way where it is just like, there's a joy and love that builds into everything. So then one of the really cool things I think that's happened to, to build the Eau Claire sound technically is like Pine Tree Hollow and then Justin's studio like April Bass being these places where people play and are accessible to them here, I think that that's the one thing I'm hearing a lot more is a lot more polished recordings that are coming out of those places and that's really interesting. Um, I mean I even recently heard this band Millennium that I don't think they've really played around here but they have that like post-pop punk sound if that's a genre and it's, it's really good but like I think the one thing I was impressed by most is just the level of production value that's on it and the production value that's on a lot of the music here I think that's one of the things where you take that like great innocent sound that we have here and you add high-end production I think that's only going to build what happens here and I'm super excited for what this scene is going to become I mean I think that one of the things with the Eau Claire scene is because we're such a college town you get to kind of see bands grow into their own and then you know naturally progress and maybe move on 
and I think that you're gonna see more people becoming inspired and starting new bands and stuff. So uh, I am super optimistic for the shape of the Eau Claire sound to come.